Hello everyone. So today we are going to cover another interesting problem which is asked in bi-weekly contest. That is minimum number of operations to move all balls to each box. So the input given is a string of boxes and we have to return an integer array that has the values that number of steps to move all the balls to that position. So the problem statement says you have n boxes. You are given a binary string boxes of length m where box of i is 0 if the i box is empty and 1 if it is contains one ball. In one operation you can move one ball from one box to adjacent box. Box i is adjacent to j if absolute difference is 1. Note that after doing so there may be more than one balls in some boxes. So return an array answer of size n where answer is the minimum number of operations needed to move all the balls to i box. Let's understand this with an example. Here is a given string boxes where ones are considered as balls and uh, zeros are considered as empty boxes. So now we have to move all the balls to first position. So here is our first position. The First position has already one ball, so we don't have to move that ball to the same position. It is anyway going to take zero efforts. So at second position, we have one ball. To move one ball from the second position to first position, it takes one step. So we are going to put one here. So if you consider the third position, there are no balls. So we have moved all the balls to first position. It takes one step. So now moving on to our second position. We already have one ball at our second position, so we don't have to move. So one ball the first position to move one ball from first position to second position, it takes one step. So we are going to put one again in the second position. Now moving on to our third position. In third position, the box is empty. We don't have any balls. But in first and second position, we have two balls. First, we are moving our first ball to third position. In order to move our first ball to third position, you first move the ball to second position and then third position. If you move the ball to second position, the first box will become 0 and the second box will become 2 and then the third box will become 0 because you moved the first ball to second position. Now, you are moving the same ball to the third position. In that case, it becomes 0, 1, 1 because you moved one ball to the third position. So now, it takes two steps to move the first ball to third place. So, so far you have made two steps. So now you have one ball left at the second place. You have to move that as well. So to, if you move that, it will become 0, 0, 2. So this to move from second position to third position, it takes one more step. So the total steps it takes to move two balls to this position is going to be so that is our output. So how do we approach it? As always, we start with a brute force and I'm going to have my pointer i here and my pointer j and j moves all over to the end for every i and we compare every i and its absolute difference and add the sum to the indexes. So let's do it now. Our i is at 0 and j is at 0 again. So in this case, uh, the absolute difference between 0 and 0 we are not going to calculate because they are empty boxes. We need boxes to be moved. So now it's time to move our j to third position. So now we found one ball. So to move that one ball to the first position, the absolute difference is going to be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So the absolute difference between 2 and 0 is going to be 2. So far, we moved the we moved one ball to position one. So now moving on to our uh, third index, there is no ball. Fourth index, there is one ball. So to move one ball from fourth index to first index, the absolute difference is four. So along with two, we're gonna add four. So finally, moving to our fifth position, there is another ball. To move from fifth position to first position, it is gonna take five steps. So we are going to add 5 to this. So overall, 5 plus 4 plus 2 is going to be 11. So our first index is going to be updated with 11. So now moving on to our second position. 
again we are calculating absolute difference from every place that is our, uh, from second position to first position the absolute difference is 1 and from fourth position to first, posi first position the absolute difference is 3 and from fifth position to second position the absolute difference is 4 so it is going to be 8 at the box 2 same way if we fill it is going to be so yes by using this iterative method we have filled our resultant array that needs to be returned here it is going to take big O of n square time complexity as we are iterating a array every time for every i so how to do it in linear time we are going to get the help of dynamic programming to make this work in linear time so now in dynamic programming first we are going to move all the balls towards right from left towards right and calculate the number of steps it takes to move the balls and then we're going to do the same operation from right towards left and calculate another steps and summing up both the steps we it's going to give us our answer array so let's see how are we going to do it but before understanding the pattern how we are going to fill the value in boxes i want you to understand why we are filling those values and how we are filling those values so now first fill our left box that is we are going to move the balls from right towards left so i just want to understand the concept that if uh, there is one empty box and one there is one box with three balls and you want to move these three balls to this empty box how many steps it takes it clearly said you have to move one ball at a time you cannot move all three balls at a time so if you move one ball at a time it is going to take you three steps because you first move one ball then the balls become two and one you next move another ball and the ball becomes one comma two and finally move the third ball then it becomes zero comma three in similar way if you want to move these three balls to the third box how many steps it will take so to move three balls to the next box it is going to take three steps because one ball at a time again to move these three balls to this box it is take it is going to take three more steps because to move to second box it is three steps it is to move to third box it is going to take another three steps so it is going to take total of six steps just by using this concept we are going to move the balls from first index towards right so let's see how are we going to do it so now first starting with our leftmost index it is zero balls so you don't have to move anything next it is one more zero balls we are not going to move anything the third index has one ball so so far so far the balls are going to be one i am keeping the count of balls we come across so now in third position there is another one we don't have to move this ball anywhere because it is in the same position so the efforts are steps going to be zero again moving to our fourth position it is an empty box but so far we encountered one ball we have to move that one ball to the fourth position so how many steps it is going to take to move that ball to fourth position it is going to take one step so i'm filling one here now moving on to our fifth position it has another ball so balls so far is going to be two so now so far balls are two and we're going to move the empty ball to here and one ball to this position that is so far you have before two you have encountered one ball and you have to move that ball from here to here as i said to move one ball after two boxes it is going to take two steps how here to move from this box to this box it took one step and from this box to this box it is going to take one more step so you are simply going to add two here because so far one ball to move that ball from here to here it took two steps moving on to our last position so far the balls encountered is two suppose 
you are going to move two balls from this position to this position how many steps it is going to take two balls one ball at a time is going to take two steps and so far you have made these many steps to move all balls towards right from somewhere to this position so you're going to put one more effort along with the steps to move it to the next box so so far two and we have encountered two balls so it is going to take four steps to move all the balls towards right so i'm going to fill four here if you're not getting it you're going to get it in next pass so stay with me so we have filled our left array now we have filled our left box now it's time to fill our right box that is we're going to start iterating towards left from right so as we have moved all the balls towards right first our last ball will be having the exact value we needed because we moved every ball towards right so this is the last position and we filled all the balls towards right so this will be perfect so we are not going to consider this cell we are simply going to fill zero here and we are going to fill from this cell to leftmost cell so now considering the ball so far as one so now we are filling balls so far as one we are at this position now so we want to move that one ball to the previous box so it is obviously going to take one one step so at this position ball so far is two so we are filling our balls as two and moving on to this place so here we have to move two balls to this place so now to move two balls from this place to this place it is going to take two steps that is we have two balls here and we are going to move two balls to this place that is one step before in this case you will need two steps because you will you can move one ball at a time so now you have made these many steps to move balls from here to here and you're going to add one more step to add, move the ball from here to here so two balls so you have to move two balls and so far you made one step and you have to add these two balls to these one step and fill in three we are simply filling steps so far plus balls so far but i want you to understand why we are filling that way moving on to this place we have zero balls so balls so far is going to be two and we're going to move all these two balls from here to here so so far the steps made is two and you have two balls so to move two balls from this place to this place it is going to take two more steps so we are filling three plus two five here moving on to here the balls now we encountered is going to be three but since the ball is in the same position you have made these many steps to move, move all the balls here to move this ball to this place you're gonna add two more because the ball so far is two and along with five you need two more steps to move the balls so i'm gonna add eight here so now moving on to our last position ball it is an empty box so so far you have made eight steps from eight steps you need to move three balls from this position to this position so to move each ball you're gonna need three steps and so far you made eight steps from this eight steps you're gonna make three more step you're gonna make three more steps to move all the balls towards left so from eight if you add three it's going to be lower so now add these two arrays to get our resultant array so now our resultant array is going to be 11 8 5 4 3 4 so this is going to be our result array so now let's see how are we going to code it here is our brute force solution where i had two for loops and i check if it is a one then i in resultant array result array i have added the absolute difference of both the indexes so now let's go to our linear solution I'm going to have a result as such and I'm going to have two more arrays that is my left and right array
and let me declare this uh, length as n since we are going to use that all over the program. And now I'm going to start filling my left box. For that, I'm going to initiate my balls so far as the leftmost number. So my leftmost number is going to be boxes. The ball so far is going to be the leftmost digit. Once that is done, I'm going to loop in my left array. And fill in my left array. That is previous value plus balls so far. And every time I fill my array, I'm going to update my balls with the present value. So now I'm done filling my left array. So it's time to fill a right array. So here I'm going to assign the rightmost value as my balls so far. And I'm going to loop in in reverse. Right of i is going to be the value in adjacent cell plus balls so far. And every time I'm going to update my balls. So yes, I have updated my balls here. You can put one more loop to calculate left plus i, but instead I'm gonna have use this array itself and as in, or you can actually cut off this result array and directly add the values to left array. It's up to us. Just to reduce the space, I'm using the same left array, but you can put in another for loop and add left i left of i plus right of i to result array and return result. Why I'm adding in left array, not in right array? Because we have started from last but one cell and filling it. Our left array, the leftmost corner will be already filled with the actual value. So we are adding it. Suppose if you want to add it to the right array, you have to assign the rightmost uh, cell with the leftmost cell's value. So finally, return the left. Let's run. Okay, I have to add those values, not just assign. Add the ball so far. I guess it runs in two milliseconds. So thanks for watching. If you like the video, please hit like and subscribe. Thank you.